Nice siren sound, right, Eugene? Mm. If you consider a siren sound nice, it's sort of an awful sound, isn't it? It's really now, nice. do you know how, how it works? What makes the sound in the siren? Well, probably because, like, the, while well, these things are moving through, mm -hmm. these blades, they slice through the air. Well, that's partly true, but the important thing is that they, they force the air out through these holes that are alongside here. As, as it turns like that, it forces the air through the holes, and the holes vary in size as the thing spins, right? Yeah. See how it, now, now it's big, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it closes off completely, and then it starts smaller and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So as this goes around, it chops the air into little tiny pieces that are constantly varying in size, and that's what makes the horrible sound of a siren. Now, how did the sound get from here up to here? Well, when... The thing went round, right? It chopped up the air, yeah. and the air was vibrating, and it brings the messages the, or the sound to it your goes ears. Through, it goes through the air over here. Mm. Well, now here is a bell jar with a vacuum gauge on the top, and here's a vacuum pump. You know how to work a vacuum pump? You turn it on over here, and here's a little clamp. We'll start the um, siren going. Then, first of all, I'll put the bell jar on top. So now, at least we've got it covered with glass. Out after, after I turn it on. Then I want you to turn on the pump, and that'll pump the air out from inside there. Then after you got it turned off, when you watch the gauge, and when it stops moving, you'll know you've got a good vacuum. Then you can close that clamp. Then you can turn off the motor, and everything will be quiet, and we'll hear to see if we can hear the siren. Do you think we'll hear it? Well, maybe. Maybe? Okay, well, anyway, you get the idea? Yeah. Put on the safety glasses, because we're taking the vacuum, we're drawing all the air out from here and we don't want that glass thing to implode and possibly fly glass all over the place. Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay, now that's with, how's the sound getting to your ear now? Well, the air is hitting against the glass, right. which vibrates the outside right. of its atmosphere, and the outside air travels So it's going ears. through the air inside the bell jar, then it's hitting the glass, and the glass is vibrating this air, and that air, that air is vibrating your ear. Okay, now turn on the pump. Watch up here. Okay, now you turn the pump off and listen. You could still hear it a little. Hear it just a little bit. Probably because it's coming through the, the table, because it's vibrating the table and, and eventually coming up here. Now what should happen when you open the clamp? Well, all the air would go out, then you could should, hear more of it. Should get louder, right? right. Okay, try it. It got louder. Yeah, it got louder. And what'll happen when I take this off? It'll get louder. So the, the whole reason for doing this experiment was to uh, solidify in your mind what it is that's necessary for you to hear a sound. What is it? Well, some kind of substance to carry the sound. In other words, sound has to go through something. In this case, it was going through air, or through glass, or through wood. But in order for sound to travel, it has to have a medium of some kind. In this case, it's air, right? Right. 